I bought the new PS5 Pro controller, the PlayStation Edge, designed by Sony to compete with the Xbox Series Elite 2 and costs a whopping $200. It's jam-packed with loads of cool features but also misses some too. And will that stop it from being one of the coolest PlayStation accessories ever made? First, let's take a look at what's inside of the box. Everything is neatly sorted within the carrying case and this carry case is completely different than I first expected. It's hard plastic and not fabric like the Xbox version. This definitely makes it feel more robust but also more more susceptible to scratching and marks if you are actually using it to transport the controller. But the reality is most of us just throw this in the drawer and never look at it again after we've set the controller up. A cool PlayStation Easter egg can be found on the bottom of the case which is a nice touch. Inside you will find the new PlayStation Edge complete with all of its accessories. This includes six different thumbstick options, the two high domes, the two low domes and also the standard PS5 caps. A braided USB cable is also included that is a decent length of 2.8 meters. This is way longer than the one that comes with your PS5. You can even combine this USB cable with the cable locking clamp inside of the box that looks really ugly and I won't be using it. But for the pro players that want this to be a wired controller for the fastest response time, I understand why this may be attractive to you. But me personally, I just think it's a gimmick. You do have the option to charge the controller inside of the case, just like with Xbox's controller, simply by removing this Velcro door. But there is no charging dock included, unlike with the Pro controller made by Microsoft, so you have to buy that separately. A few final accessories are the two rear paddles, and also the two half dome paddles that attach to the back of the PlayStation Edge. Sony's absolutely nailed the aesthetics of this controller. The touchpad looks beautiful, decorated with the PlayStation icons, and finished in a black colour with a more squared off aggressive design. This is very similar to the rare PS4 controllers from the last generation like the 20th anniversary console that I own. That controller had extra details that you didn't get on the standard edition and the same is true here. The black D-pad and also the black buttons complement the touchpad and all help give the controller more definition against the whites. The controller light bar also has a new shape and is more prominent and visible which I do like. Changes to the triggers have also been added with grip textures added to L2 and R2 once again using those PlayStation icons to achieve this and it feels unbelievable in your hands. This also combined with the new rubber texture at the rear of the controller that provides more hand grip to your palms. Even just visually, you start to see the major improvements with this latest controller. You also start to see a lot of visual similarities with the Xbox Series Elite 2 especially with those textured triggers and rubber hand grips, but we'll talk more about that later. A major difference of the Edge compared to any Pro Controller I've tested is the inclusion of two additional paddles at the back rather than four. I understand why they've done this. It does help keep the controller more comfortable because it's quite slim, the PlayStation controller, compared to an Xbox controller that isn't as much space at the back, which helps a lot with you not accidentally pressing things. I can't explain the amount of times I've accidentally pressed stuff on the Series Elite 2 controller when I didn't need the paddles in like a game like Farming Simulator and you'd accidentally trigger stuff and it was really annoying. But in addition to this, it's also less overwhelming. If you've never had a Pro Controller before, this is actually quite a nice entry level to that because there's only two buttons at the back that you really need to concern yourself about mapping and thinking, well, what should I map to those? But then this has a few negatives. Sometimes this oversimplification made it a little bit frustrating when gaming as you would always want to map more than two extra things to your controller. So most commonly, I would have things like reload and crouch mapped to these buttons, but I always wanted something like jump and change weapons so I didn't have to move my thumb off the thumbstick and, and dart around, I wanted them two extra paddles. So eventually once you got more competent and confident with how this controller works and the limitations of it, soon you ran into it becoming a bit of a bottleneck and you're wanting more after only a few play sessions with it. This really does limitate the growth somebody could have with this controller. As soon as you start making custom profiles and understanding what it can do, you soon realize that it can't really do that much. I love the different shaped paddles that you get. You can choose between the traditional lever style and also the half dome. Surprisingly, the half domes quickly became my favorite option. They are very tactile and feel solid when you press hard on them. The half domes also add extra space so you don't accidentally press buttons in the games you don't need them for. This then lets you use this as like a regular PS5 controller without the buttons on and you don't even notice that they're there, whereas with the other paddles, you still feel them at the bottom so you're always sort of adjusting how you would hold the controller. So this lets you play something like FIFA without having to remove the paddles from your actual controller and then jump straight into a game of Call of Duty and start using them. My only complaint with the half domes is that they are easy to push out and fiddle with when you're gaming or bored waiting in a lobby and then you lose them when they fall to the floor. Switching our focus over to the triggers, nothing too groundbreaking here. You have three positions to change the throw of the trigger and as soon as you change this from the default standard PS5 trigger throw, the adaptive triggers will be disabled, which all of the pro players sort of want anyways. They want them as fast as possible triggers and then you can mess about with the dead zone and things to make them 
even faster, which I quite enjoyed, but it does also feel like a little bit of a waste. The PS5, a huge USP of buying a game on that console like Call of Duty, is having those adaptive triggers and that extra sensation when playing, which I personally think is really fun and, and worth buying a game on the PS5 just for that. Like if I want to play competitively, I'll buy it on the PC and I'll have a copy of Modern Warfare on my PlayStation 5 to just have fun with the triggers on my sofa. And I would have liked to have seen the adaptive trigger support still remain there, even if you adjusted the trigger throw. And basically if you had it set to the shortest trigger throw, you would just get like a really aggressive kickback of the adaptive triggers, which I think would feel really cool if that actually happened. Also, I don't think the thumbstick options are as vast on the PlayStation Edge compared to the Xbox Series Elite 2. That controller has loads of variations to choose from and you can mix and match them on your controller with lots of different interesting heights and shapes. Whereas this PlayStation controller feels rather basic with the exact same thumbstick shape, just a tiny bit taller or shorter. However, I must admit that I do love these dome shapes. I've missed them so much from the PS2 and PS3 and finally experiencing them on a modern day controller is such a throwback and so nostalgic when you're playing something your favorite games on the PlayStation with these thumb caps. The rounded domes are by far my favorite PlayStation thumbstick and I opted to use both of the short versions on the PlayStation Edge controller. Compared to my Xbox Series Elite 2, I did find the thumbsticks to be clunky to change on the PlayStation Edge. They are not magnetic like the Xbox controller and instead you have to click them into place and you have to align them perfectly just right to get them clicked down which just feels a little bit cheap compared to how they magnetize on and off on the Microsoft controllers. However, something very impressive is the replaceable thumbstick modules. They are really easy to access. You just press this release button at the back to open up the top cover, pop it off, and then lift up this lever to release the module. A very tidy design, and thinking out of the box, some third-party companies could potentially make their own modules for this for some crazy controller mods in the future. This could take customization to a whole nother level. On the topic of customization, let's talk about custom profiles. You access these through the function button and you can jump in and create four different profiles that are actually loaded in directly onto the controller. These are the assigned profiles. And then you can have a load of unsaved uh, ones over here that you can switch out if required. So for example, if we jump into our Call of Duty one, within here, I could go ahead and customize any of the mappings on the controller itself, but also on the rear paddles. So you see currently I've got crouch and also reload mapped here. These are my favorite ones, but we could switch this out to be jump. So basically now I could trigger the jump button instead of uh, reloading. Further things you can customize within each profile are the stick sensitivities and dead zones. So you can see here for each stick, we can actually customize the sensitivity curve. I played around a lot with this and tried all the different types ones out. I quite like the precise one and steady, but during my testing in certain games, I actually found them to glitch out a little bit when I started to adjust these thumbstick options. So in the end, I usually just left it as the default linear setup, but you can see if you do customize it out at how it actually responds with a live view in the bottom left corner, which which is nice. You can then go crazy with it if you so desire, and you can do this for each stick individually. Other dead zones you can customize are the trigger dead zones, and you can see here we have got them set incredibly low, so they trigger really fast. This sometimes does have missed triggers now and again, but it didn't happen too often when I was actually testing this out, and you could feel the difference between when you had it set to something like 100 or the value of 5. Within the system settings, there are further parameters you can customize within the accessories sub menu. These are things such as turning off the feedback when you switch between profiles. This is basically like the indicator light and also the controller vibrates when you actually switch, which is a nice bit of response. But if you don't want that, you can turn it off. You can also adjust the things like the brightness of the light indicators, pretty standard stuff on any PlayStation controller. And you can even customize how the function menu is displayed. So if you think it looks a little bit cluttered with the default setup, you can strip this back so it's a little bit more refined. I know a lot of you are probably thinking throughout this video that it's pretty stupid that I'm comparing the PlayStation Edge to the Xbox Series Elite 2 because they aren't even made for the same console. But at the same time, I think it's an important comparison to make as it's an official controller made natively for the platform by their own manufacturer. And Xbox have been making these pro controllers for years, I think since 2017. So a lot of the gaming community have a good understanding of what that controller is capable of. So it's a nice little comparison to make because we know the limitations of that controller very well. Right, okay, cool. Let me do a little bit more testing and we'll come back to this. One week later. So I've been testing this controller out now for around about a week and I've got to say I absolutely love it apart from four key things. First, although you can adjust the volume with the new function key by holding it down and then using the D-pad, which is a pretty awesome feature by the way. The problem is this doesn't work with wireless headphones like the InZone H9, which ironically is an officially licensed PlayStation product made by Sony. It only works with wired headsets. 
which kind of sucks. And speaking of things that sucks, number two is the battery life. This controller has a smaller internal battery than the regular PS5 controller, and it's doing way more things. You know, you've got extra buttons, you've got the onboard memory for all of your profiles, it's doing a lot. This means the battery life is even worse than on the regular PS5 controller, and you're looking at anything from like four to six hours at a push. You'll have to charge this up a lot over a very intense weekend of gaming. Thirdly, it needs four rear paddles. Two is great to get you started, but it doesn't leave you much room for growth. Finally, at number four, I have to address the pricing. So this is $200 if you buy it in the USA, but if you buy it in Europe and the UK, it's around £210, which equates to being around $260 to $270. So it's significantly more expensive in the UK and EU rather than overseas in the US. And this really does alter whether it's worth it, because if you're an American viewer, sure, it's worth it. $200, yeah, sure, it's worth it. But if you're a UK viewer, then it's much harder to justify because the price of this controller is literally the price of an Xbox Series S. So you could have two consoles. You could have a PS5 for the PlayStation exclusives and an Xbox Series S for Game Pass and all of the awesome Xbox exclusives that are coming this year and have the ultimate gaming setup instead of just having a super fancy controller that you don't really need. On the topic of buying an Xbox, if you want to see how it compares to a PS5 after two years, you should check out this video next and consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed this video.